the video uh, at the end of the talk while well, y'all take a look at the uh, you know Leica's uh, optics. <coughs> so luckily I did take part. It's <laughs> it's twelve midnight to midnight, and then next morning I gotta fly out another twelve hours of non you know, no sleep. So I think no, I'm not gonna go. <laughs> yeah, the. Champions are Fly Away is actually a brand name given by these two guys uh, from the Society of Protection of uh, Nature and Israel. They conceived this uh, idea of having a bird race to raise funds, not for Israel, but for the country outside Israel, because Israel is rich anyway. So they, this year they raised, uh, they decided to raise funds for a bird life partner in Turkey. I think it's called Doga, the Niki, or whatever. Apparently, there's about 3 million Syrian refugees there, and the children are killing the birds. Maybe for food, maybe for sports, I don't know. But anyway, part of the funds that the race gonna go there to educate these kids not to you know, kill, the, kill the birds. Because uh, bird life, I did some research and found that every year across the Mediterranean, you know, 25 million birds are shot and killed. That's mind boggling. <laughs> so, this is only a small little drop that they, you know, they try to, to save. So, this is the society that, you know, and the, the guy that earlier on you saw, uh, Jonathan uh, Maygrave and uh, Don uh, Dan Alon, they are the two guys who created this, this uh, bird race. It's, I think this is the fourth, fourth year only. So it's a very young race, but they're getting a lot of international attention because of this, uh, you know, conservation uh, team. Okay, I was lucky, privileged to be sent over or to represent Leica uh, over there uh, this year uh, to represent actually Southeast Asia. We're supposed to have a Southeast Asia team, but because of the short notice. I don't know to say yes. <laughs> so maybe I don't know. This year I don't know, like a like a maybe enough time to send a, a proper team uh, with, with, with enough to, you know notice to the rest of the people. But the other thing also we forget the, the Indonesians are not allowed to go to Israel. The, the Malaysians are not allowed to go. So it's a bit tough for them, you know. So anyway, I was happy to accept it and I enjoy my my uh, you know trip there. Like also sponsored three three other teams, I right? two from the U from Europe and one for the US. This is a US team. Uh, this guy, very famous uh, brother from uh, Cape May, and a lot of you know, very good researcher. The map you see over here is actually you no know, triangle. is what they call the playing ground. This is where the actual race is going to be held. We love this at the bottom tip. You know, we, we do a lot of here. Just cover this area. Here. It's at another tip of, uh, of the Red Sea, and from the top to the bottom, the, from the bottom to the top, <coughs> driving two, two hours, yeah? yeah, about two hours. So these bad guys will, you know, you know, twelve o'clock they will take the car and drive all the way to the top, and then from there they put all the way back down. Uh, uh, and of course, some of the teams uh, did, did a green bird race like we did last time. Like two teams went on a you know bicycle. One team actually walk around. Yeah. Walk around the desert. That's not my style. <laughs> <laughs> uh in day three uh group photograph uh, how I wish to see how much race can I just half <laughs> for 34, 35 teams took part. And uh, half of them I think are locals and the other half are the international race. And uh each of our team are supposed to raise about 3,000 US, which most of them did. And each of them had to pay 200 US to participate. They did tell them at the beginning. <laughs> when I tried to register, they said, okay, $200 each credit card. <laughs> we, our bird race is about $10. So it's long, we have a long way to go for, for the registration. Uh, the winning team this year came in with 181. Last year was 174, so about seven species. And, and the funny thing is that the, the local team and the international team all both had the same same number, you know. 
give me one day one. One day one is actually pretty good. Huh? Ours is uh, 130. You know, not bad, uh, so, you know, I don't think we ever got to reach one but if our blood race, if you combine all the results together, we hit 185 once total in one day. So it's still not, not that bad. And for this year, we have the first team from China called the Golden Crescent, led by a UK brother. I think he lives, he lives and works in Beijing now. Terry Thompson, I don't know anybody knows him. And of course, the very famous uh, bird guy, <coughs> Man, uh, Man, uh, Tom, Tom Mansil. Anybody been in China with him before? Uh, Following his Facebook. Is it? <laughs> Following his Facebook. <laughs> I he, he told me to, to do a lot of pheasant uh, you know, trips. Very very good. Speaks good, good English. Mm -hmm. I've been going with him again in October. But yeah, if you all go China birding, this is a guy to, to, to go with. You know. And a uh, uh, popular Bob Frogger, Cecilia <laughs> Cheng. Uh, I get a wrong name, this name. Anyway, she doesn't did, have a done birding before. But after this trip, she's like, hope, oh, completely hope. <laughs> <laughs> we got a brother, you know. The uh, teams are, this is the only opening ceremony, they are receiving their team numbers and this team really blew me away. They are from Palestine and we know that you know, Israel and Palestine are not having the best single relationship. And to have a team over there to come and take part and support this cause, uh, it's like, you know, bird conservation is no borders, no, no uh, you know, above politics, beyond religion, beyond race, so they all in fact, when they came out and you know, they got really one of the loudest applause, and they they, they give they get to talk about birds in Palestine as well. So full respect to this you know, people. Uh, a week before the race, we have what they call the bird festival, and what the bird, bird festival I thought was exhibition and all that, but apparently, the bird festival is just that some local guy will take all the participants to all the different sites. To bird watch and show them, you know, this is a uh, this wonder, this is what and all that. Because we are not familiar with the birds, so the whole week is to orientate us to see where the sites are, what the birds that we see, so that by the time the bird race come, you we'll have an idea of what, you know, what the birds are. So that's uh, my friend there, looking the uh, you guys. The rest of the uh, question. The the vista you see is roughly what. You, most of the places you, you, you go, you know, very desert, very, uh, you know, bare, dry, with a few of this. So the birds will be here and we'll try to look for it. Not that easy as well. Okay, I think I've got three birds, so the first one. <laughs> uh, a very elegant swift, uh, alpine swift. Actually, it's, it's got the same kind of shape as one of our media tails. A very, very fast flyer, long distance flyer. And I think it's got a record for one of the longest uh, you know, bird that stays in the air. Uh, some researchers in uh, Bern University in Switzerland got a few birds, put some sensors on them, got the sensors back, and found that some of them, at least three of them, stayed in the air for 200 days. That's about seven months. Non stop, meaning that they don't even come down to, 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 to do anything. You just fly for, for seven months from one end of the, I think from Africa all the way to the north. So the question now is that how do they feed, how do they sleep? And they have done any research. They just hypothesize that maybe I mean there's a lot of insects in the air, a lot of floating plankton and all that, so they can just open the mouth and then hopefully they you know they get their food. And they say that maybe for sleeping they maybe wait for some kind of a shift of wind or, or some wind current to bring them up around and then they just maybe close their eyes and just stretch out their wings and you know, sleep sleep for you know whatever hours that you know that they go home. So, but the one they did in the uh, you know, some research in Beijing also some Beijing shiftlets or something like that, also fly very far. I think they did a research on it. So yeah and the thing is that we got this uh, photo because of very strong headwind. We were up in this mountain and a flock, small flock came across. But they fly very slowly because you know they, the, the headwind is really strong. So we managed to shoot them quite low as well. Yeah. So 
Yeah, one of those lucky lucky shots that we have. I think he got much better pictures than mine. Only one only one day this condition. Other days don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so lucky the guy was so low and then they kept come down, you know. When we're there we're lucky to meet up with uh, a German ornithologist, Thomas Sacher. He's the friend of uh, Leica's uh, product manager, a lady called uh, the Net Roland. And he brought us around. And he knows the birds, he knows the bird calls, he knows where to find the birds, he knows just about everything about the birds. So for us, it's like, you know, God said, fantastic. So this morning, he got an alert from a friend saying that there's a pair of this cypress wobbler 80 kilometers up in some desert area. He said, oh, they go. <laughs> so he said, go. <laughs> but honestly, when I was driving, when we were driving there, I was thinking, how are you going to find two wobblers in all of this desert? But anyway, when we reached there, we were so lucky. There's another group already actually scoping the bird. We just have to go slowly behind them. When they finish scoping, they just go behind. And we got the bird. So there's only two of these, you know, wobblers that was the whole of Israel and we you know, managed to go and find them. Not, not us, but you know. They uh, endemic to Cyprus and I think they, they consider it as a national bird, but there's a lot of dispute now. I don't know. They want to, they want so much uh, international bird. But in winter, they will come down to Jordan, to Egypt, and I think to Israel. And by end March, they normally will go back. So we, we got this around the third, last day of March. Right? So we may be, hey, what about the, we made the last, last to see this bird. But I don't know whether the bird race anybody got this or not, on the, on the list. I don't know where it went. Yeah. Anyway, I'm quite happy to get this bird. Uh, my last bird, the Otalon. Oh yeah, if you are yeah, in France in the 1990s, late 90s, you can actually order this dish in a restaurant. <coughs> and they saw the population crash, and the government has got no choice but to really ban the, you know, ban this dish. What happened is that during the autumn migration in Cyprus. The farmers and all these people will mix net them, keep them in these dark little cages, and feed them for two weeks. Apparently they eat, they eat more when they are, they are, you know, in the dark. And by the time they are fattened, they drown them in brandy, uh, a very special brandy called Amana or something. So the brandy gives it, supposed to give it a flavor, give it a taste and all that. And then when the time comes, they you know, roast it and present it as a dish. So we are complaining that the Vietnamese eat fried sparrows and all that, but the French also eating roasted on things. And mm -hmm. So these are my three slides. Now the main feature of top is uh, <laughs> he'll show you all the uh, after migrations and all the other songbirds that I actually gave a talk last month at Lycus shop. But it's a it's a longer shot. Uh, it's a one hour. Uh, covers a, what what uh, Kim Jong will cover. So I think it's a, this is a much a long longer time than, than my talk. Okay. Uh, my name is Kim Jong. Yeah, cover the rest. Let me do that. So why Ila? Okay, it's a it's a the word. Some people call it the world's ultimate passport for Paleartic vectors migration. Paleartic means Europe and Asia. America is they call it the Arctic. Okay. So the okay, main species include step buzzard, four hundred and sixty five thousand, the European honey buzzard up to eight hundred and fifty thousand, uh, and step eagle seventy six thousand, black kite thirty six thousand, the one sparrow hawk forty nine thousand. So altogether there's one point three million raptors <laughs> that pass through each season. So these are the principal long distance director migration <coughs> flyways in the world. So in America there's this one over here. Two is Spain to Africa. That one is um, from Israel okay, down to Africa. Basically these are birds from Europe and from Asia. Then for the East Asian side, we have Chumpong down to Malaysia to Indonesia. And the other one is uh, Japan, Taiwan, Philippines. Okay, take note there are only two here. But the next slide, or next view, you see something. Okay, 
So this one shows the numbers. Okay, over here in Mexico, 4.6 million. Uh, that's the highest in the whole world. Over here, Straits of Gibraltar, 380,000. Elite, Israel, uh, 830,000. Take note that these numbers are, this chart itself is a bit old, so the numbers are not so hard to date. Okay. And Japan, uh, the typo is 200,000. That was about maybe 8 to 10 years ago. For Japan, last year, they had 800,000. So the count has increased quite a lot. Uh, Switch of Korea, 400,000. Okay, take note again now, there are two. Uh, there's one to the west of Europe, one to the east. Okay. Then why why Iraq? Why do we decide to go? Look at this. Okay. In one day, second of May 2015, two years ago, 250,000 honey buzzards in one day. And this number, 250,000, is what we get in Thailand five to ten years ago. In the whole two months, September all the way to end of October. This is number, but over there in one day, they get this kind of number. That's why, that's why we have to go and see. Okay, but the, the birds, they come in waves, so each species got their own timing. Starting from, in fact, we have the step eagles, okay, uh, 14,000 a day. Then after that, we got uh, from mid-March to late-March, our black kites up to 10,000. Step buggers <coughs> up to 130,000 in one day. And from April onwards, we get the Lavan Sparrow Hawks and uh, European Honey Buzzard in May. So if you look at the timing, okay, why they hold a festival in the uh, later part of March is because of this. Okay, late part, later part of March, you get black kites, you get step buzzards, you also get some step eagles, the later ones. Okay, you don't get any Lavan Sparrow Hawks or Honey Buzzards, okay, but you get, at least get the other three. And if you go in uh, May, you get that, may get that 250,000 honey buzzards in one day, but you only see one species. You don't see any of the rest. Mm. Okay. So basically, they tie this uh, bird festival. It's uh, one whole week to give you an idea. Uh, okay, so this one, you'll notice that there's one more flyway in the middle. Okay, this chart basically shows, it's just give you a better idea, a uh, nicer chart to show that why is there such a concentration here is because birds from Western Europe they also come to here from the middle of uh, Europe and Asia and Asia they all come to here that's why the numbers are so huge compared to the rest okay and raptors you will notice that I only showed here and here mm. over here we don't show raptors because here the sea crossing is 16 km okay it's about one third the crossing from Straits of Malacca, Tanjong Tuan to Sumatra for those who are Okay, over here is overland. Over here, Italy to Africa, there's a crossing of 100 kilometers. Raptors don't look like that, so raptors, they don't use this one. They only use the two, two ends. And the uh, middle one used by the passerines. Those passerines don't really saw, they just keep the thing. So even water, they just go. <laughs> okay, to give you an idea of a bird festival, basically it's a whole week of Burning and burning and burning, nothing but burning. <laughs> <laughs> so even arrival day from Kalavi Airport, you drive five hours down to Ila, you burn along the way, stop at the Dead Sea, then you arrive at Ila, you continue burning, then they have burn all the way to dark, they have a starting time with two hours before sunrise to drive two hours <laughs> to see a special McQueen's bastard. bastard yeah. Very difficult to see one. Then they also burn until midnight to look for night birds. Mm. Like the Nubian night jars and uh, Pharaoh's eagle owl <laughs> and other sort. Uh, so this is uh, during one of the uh, days. This guy, uh, Noam Weiss, is the uh, the head of the birding center in Villa, and he's bringing people around. I think some of you can recognize this gentleman over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using a like <laughs> Okay, so to give some orientation, this is Villa. City actually is quite small. From here to here, the drive is only like five minutes. Okay. So, which also means that all the burning sites are quite uh, easy to reach. Okay, so, North Beach is one of them, Holland Park, another one. This is a burning center, and these are water bodies where you get to see sand grounds and flamingos. And for raptor migration, they have one uh, site over here, they call it a uh, high mountain, 600 meter above sea level. And one called Low Mountain, 200 meters above sea level. Okay. 
thing. Okay, this one is just to give you a better idea of uh, where the roads, which is the red color one. Okay, and I just want to tell you a story for this one. Is that the German guy he brought us uh, here for birding to look for some rose finch. Unfortunately, we didn't see it. Then after that, he wanted to go up here to look for another special bird called black bush robin. Also very rare there. Okay, and when he keep the GPS, right? The GPS tell him to go this way and go across. And all these are actually dirt tracks in the desert. <laughs> Luckily, he has got the sense of mind and direction, and he knows that there are no roads over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we came down by the proper roads, and then we went one round. <laughs> so okay, you need to have some sense of uh, the condition over there. Don't just follow the GPS. <laughs> you end up the dirt road for you drive. Get stuck. <laughs> okay. So okay, this is the whole Israel from north to south. Okay, the main area as uh, Alan shown is to the south. But why I show this is because I also travel to the north. The reasoning for myself is that uh, usually I stick to, to, to Asia. Now I go so far, I better cover the whole country because I'm not going to go back there again. <laughs> so from here to here is only 420 kilometers, quite manageable. In one day, actually, I travel from south to the north. Okay, and these are some of the sites, all these uh, green areas. The pink one are some of the uh, cultural sites. This is uh, Roman ruins. Jerusalem, you all know, Dead Sea, okay, the airport is over here. So from here to here is about 5 hours drive. Okay. Just give you an example of uh, one of the days spent in March when we were actually there. Okay, what they have a step buzzard, 48,000. Okay. They also have a black kite, 2,000, almost 2,500. Okay. Long legged buzzard, this is rare, we actually didn't see it. Because they have two stations, they Okay, and um, sometimes the birds are far. Okay, so we can see this one. Okay, uh, black stock, step eagle. These are really, really good numbers. Okay, this is one of the highest uh, counts during the period when we were there, fifty-three thousand. And this is actually the whole season. Okay, they count from uh, February, March, April, and to be mid of May. And this year they have uh, half a million, five hundred eighty-five thousand or six hundred thousand. Uh, the highest number is uh, step, bu step buzzards and the highlighter ones are actually the ones that we saw, about 12 species okay. <coughs> we were there for about a week and then on and off we just walked to the mountain, spent a few hours there to look for this okay, this is the birding center, they call it the International Birding and Research Center, ILAC okay, linking uh, continents from Eurasia to Africa Okay, the center is actually very small, much smaller than our somewhere below. And this one is a saltwater uh, pond. This one is a freshwater pond. And these are some greenery. So you've got a mixture of uh, birds. And they have bird hides over here, bird hides over here, over here for you to see the birds. And they have a center here. You can get some greens, get some souvenirs or something. This is at their, uh, one of their buildings. Uh, it's like a height for people to observe raptors and they have this uh, life size, you see one, one to one, this is actually on the roof life size, an imperial eagle spotted eagle, lesser spotted eagle step eagles uh, adult, immature, juvenile and others so this is on the way up, driving up the mountains so basically, you can put anywhere There's, although they have two official coming spots back right? You just drive along, you see birds migrating, right? You just pull to the side of the road and you can just start birding. It's very convenient. Okay, this is a view from um, the higher mountain out to the sea. And see the people just pull off to the roads anywhere you can park and then just start burning. And these are the typical scenes that you see over there. These are all step buzzards. More step buzzards. And this one was taken by my handphone. I'm driving and then there's a lot coming and very low, so I just pull aside and I just use my phone. It's good to have a husband there. Because <laughs> they have that. And what you notice is that there's a lot of scope over here. And because you can see from the previous auto, from the mountain, you look all the way to the sea, you can see very far. So sometimes the clocks are far away and you look through the scope to look at them. Okay, so this is the part on the 
practice uh, let me go to the other part oh that's the intro so these are the rectors They are just flying above uh, the hills, and you will notice there's actually a, a shelter here. This is the remnant of the Israel and uh, Egypt war. This is where the soldiers put at the height to the war. More raptors. Uh, mainly they are step buzzers, but you also can see from here the shape. Yeah. You see this one? The yeah. triangular tail. Yeah. Yeah. The wing is also longer, it's a black type. Yeah. Step buzzard. The game this is the black kite. This one. Yeah. Uh, so this one, one species. Wow. Wow. We have the step buzzard, mm -hmm. black kite. You see a kind of trail, mm -hmm. pop tail, and uh, Egyptian vulture. Mm -hmm. And not all soaring birds are raptors. You also have other birds that are these uh, black stock. Another mm -hmm. black kite against all the uh, step buzzards. Um, flying between the hills. Sometimes you get a lot in the sky. This is just part of it, only can't capture everything. A bit closer view. All step buzzards. More step buzzards. Oh, uh, shit. And this is a uh, step buzzard. Okay. It was actually facing to the right. Then it turned and looked at me. After two seconds, fly off. <laughs> That's how shy it is. So this is a uh, dark moth. They have many different variations of plumage. These are dark moth. You see this one? Different mm. pattern. And another one. Slightly different, more rufous. And then this one, the body, there's no band at all. You see like this one, there's mm. this one. Something here, nothing at all. A bit skinny here. Okay, 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 a bit paler. This one is a butter eagle, pale moth. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> daily occurrence, can see every day. This one, uh, this one is a rare find. This is a lesser spotted eagle. Okay. It's, it's look very similar to the greater spotted eagle. But it's smaller, it's the same size as the step buzzer. Okay, so you look at the step buzzer and everything is dark, right? Don't have the barring, then look closely. Uh, what sets it apart is this pale commerce, it's called commerce. And the uh, wing over here. I only saw one. This is a step eagle, another step eagle, step eagle again, and this is a heavy area. Uh, you're really lucky you got this over the open field, you're just soaring right over. Uh. This is the underwing of the same bird. Uh, this is the uh, Western Marsh Harrier. Okay, how to differentiate from the Eastern Marsh which we have is the dark portion here attached to the eye. For the Eastern Marsh, you have white around the eye. And also, this one has no tail round. The eastern marsh that we have has a tail round. Okay, this is a male. Just now, those few are female juvenile type. This is a male western marsh area. This is a black type. They look a bit different from the ones that we have. Okay. All black types. You can see from the triangular tail and long wings mm. and another black kite in reasonably good lighting you can see that it's actually not that black or comes mm. a shade of brown okay more black kites see the foctail foctail mm. these two are stack buzzards okay another black kite in the green light another view these low ones are actually not on the raptor count sites itself this one are actually on the, uh, the pool, the pools, the ponds, and this was in the late evening. 
when the birds are finding a place to come down and land and rest, that's why they are very low. It's a common terrestrial. Another one female juvenile type. Maybe it's uh, lesser textural. They look very similar. <laughs> okay, lesser textural on the ground. Okay, this is a male with a green head. It's a male. So how to tell the common textural from the lesser textural? The common textural, they have black spots on the back. The lesser do not have. And also the lesser got this grey band on the wing over here. And by the way, lesser casual is in Singapore check is vagrant, but it comes now and then. Okay, so where is the lesser casual seen is in this area. This one is actually a field um, where they have these circular machines going around to water, but when we were there they didn't grow anything. Okay, that's why it's all dry. And behind actually here is Jordan, another country. It's a osprey, spray mm -hmm. again, a short tail mm -hmm. eagle, which we also have but very rare. Another short tail eagle. This one has a dark wood, and this one doesn't have a dark wood. Again, soaring birds, but not necessarily raptors. These are actually black stocks. They also come in big flocks. Closer mm -hmm. look at them. This is just a vista of uh, the um, product about one and a half hours up from Ilat, where they have this canyon, and this area is where they go to see the Egyptian vultures and as well as the different vultures. Egyptian vulture? This is a griffin vulture. They are so rare, so they are tagged because they are being studied. <laughs> And okay, basically this uh, show four different vultures and the routes that they take. Okay, satellite tracking or flight routes of different vultures caught at this place, Marques from one the transmitter. So one go up here to Europe and go all the way almost to uh, France. Okay, and another one go down to Africa. One come along the coast to Saudi Arabia. Another one go to Jordan to Saudi Arabia. So they disperse everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this vulture is closely related to the Himalayan vulture, which we see here. But the Himalayan is supposed to be Himalayan, but you look at the behavior, you see that they actually wander all over the place. That's why sometimes we see the Himalayan vulture in Singapore also. So basically this is a desert landscape over in Vila area. And always at the bottom, this is where water, when it rains up, which is very rare, the water will go down. And then this is where you get some plants. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the yeah. connection. Please try and again in a moment. That's where most of the birds are. But this one is a tourist attraction. Uh, people basically take the bus, go all the way to here, then they climb up. You see this black spot? These are not plants. These are actually people <laughs> coming up. And this is a bus here to pick them up. <laughs> and this zoom in. You can see these are actually people climbing up. I don't know how they climb up here. It looks crazy. <laughs> So in the desert, you see this kind of birds. Okay, it's a red deer. Okay, I need to skip to see the name. White crown red deer. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember all the names. <laughs> Another is the same bird, white crown red deer. Uh, this is a hooded red deer. Look very similar, right? That's why I say I can't remember the name. I need to put the name there. This is a desert lark. This one uh, is quite common in the desert area. In fact, at the raptor watch spots where we stand there and look at raptors, once in a while you hear something or you see something flying around and these are the little birds. Usually two of them will be just walking around. Some of them are as close as like two meters to us, less than, nearer than the focusing distance of the camera. You cannot take a picture. Uh, this is the like alpine street. Slow motion, that's why you can manage to take the picture. Raptors, step buzzers. Ah, this is good. Go back again. Okay, let's go to the last 